Hearing. You know, one thing I learned quickly, when you're the president and you're not feeling too good, I did feel great. You have more doctors than you've ever seen in your life before. I was like, it was like a public place. And they were gathered around my bed. They said, what's the problem? I said, I don't know, doc, but I'm not feeling too good. And I got to get back on the trail. You know what the trail is, right? The campaign trail. I got to get back on the trail. Get me the hell out of here, doc. Johns Hopkins was great. We have all the great hospitals represented. And I'll tell you, Walter Reed is incredible. I've seen what they do to the soldiers. They come back so badly wounded, and they fix them. Thank you. Thank you. Walter Reed is so great. But they're all around, and they're saying, sir, I think uh, you're going to have to take it easy for a little while. And they gave me something called Regeneron. You ever hear of Regeneron? And we're going to make it available to everybody that needs it free. Free, right? Free. Antibodies. And uh, all I know, and I don't want to give any credit to this drug, I want to say it was me because I'm in perfect physical condition and I'm very young. I'm very young and I'm in perfect physical shape. Perfect. You know, I said that jokingly. I said that a couple of weeks ago. CNN, fake news, CNN went crazy. He's not in perfect shape, but he's not young. They went crazy. They thought it was horrible, a horrible, horrible statement. Now, we, uh, we did a great job, and I would like to say that the antibody, the, what they gave me, didn't help, but it probably did, because I woke up the next morning, and I felt like Superman. I wanted to rip, I wanted to rip my shirt off, just like Clark Kent. Anybody ever hear of Clark Kent? Just like the legendary Clark Kent. <laughs> you know we're going to win the election, huh? you know that, we're going to win. This is not, this is much more so than four years ago. I'm looking at some of our great senators, we're going to win this election. We're going to have a great victory. And a lot of people want to go out on Tuesday. They don't want to go out early. It's called the Great Red Wave. Wave, you see. They, don't want to go out. they always say, sir, could you please ask them to go out on Monday, Sunday, you know, because you can go out now. You can vote, right? But I said, they don't really want that. They want to go out. You know, they want to make it a little more convenient for you. But when those booths open up, you're going to see something that probably has never seen before. You've never seen. In Florida, they're not doing well. They had to get that lead. That lead's going to be taken over, I think, very, very quickly. The biggest problem we have is if they cheat with the ballots. That's my biggest problem. That's the only thing, that's the only thing I worry about. If they cheat with the ballots, right? If they cheat with the ballots, and you know, they did find some in a garbage can from the military, military ballots. It had the name Trump written. They wanted to go for Trump. They found him in a garbage can. Now, if they cheat, oh, hundreds of thousands. Every day, you don't wake up and not read a story about it. Every day, there's cheating with the ballots. And you have governors, Democrat governors, uh, that are players, wise guys, wise guys. And uh, it's a disgrace. You know, in Nevada, we like Nevada, but you got a governor there that's a player. And even if you want to speak, they make it very hard to find a location, but we found one, and 50,000 people showed up a couple of weeks ago. Latino home ownership is now at an all-time high, all-time high. And by the way, if you look at new houses, if you look at automobile production, it's hard to believe. It literally is superseding what we had prior to the pandemic, and nobody is even imagining that to bring even greater opportunity and prosperity to Latino and Latino community. And I say the Latinos, and I say the Hispanics, and I have a lot of friends, I say, what do you like better? They said, you can call us anything. You can. <laughs> the Latino community in Arizona and around the country, today I'm announcing the American Dream Plan. Over the next four years, the American Dream Plan will bring more than two million new jobs to Hispanic communities, create over a half a million new Hispanic-owned small businesses, 
which will end up being large businesses, if I know you and I know you well. Great business people, great natural business people. Expand opportunities for federal contracting. It's going to be much easier for you to get some of those jobs. And increase access to capital by hundreds of billions of dollars. You're going to be in great shape. You're going to say, I liked him very much. Now, if Sleepy Joe gets in, they're going to ask him about it. He's not going to have a clue. He's not going to be able to tell you this. More Hispanic Americans will be able to buy a home to afford quality health insurance and to raise their families in a beautiful, safe neighborhood. And I will provide school choice to every parent in America. School choice. Joe Biden would obliterate everything Hispanic Americans have worked for, wiping out your small businesses with lockdowns and regulations, gutting your police departments, and devastating your families with massive tax hikes. He will attack Catholic organizations. By the way, Hispanics, generally speaking, don't like that too much. And ban charter schools, fund extreme late-term abortion, and surrender your country to the violent socialist mob. And you see that happening. How about Portland, right? You know how quick we could fix that, Mike Lee? We could fix that in about, what, 30 minutes, right? The governor has to call up. He said maybe a little bit less. That's why we're going to win a record share of the Hispanic vote this election day. We are going to win a number that's never been won by a Republican. And maybe, maybe we're going to beat the Democrats. That will be incredible. That will be that means you're on your way to great business. In 2016, Arizona voted to fire our failed and corrupt political establishment. And you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. Finally. It's taken a long time. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. And if I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you harder than any president has ever fought for their constituents before. To show you how corrupt the Washington media is, I was just — and did you see this? This was just revealed. It was just revealed that, you know, Anonymous, you know this Anonymous that everybody's been looking for, that law enforcement could have found early if they wanted to, but everybody was looking for Anonymous. Turned out to be a low-level staffer, a sleazebag, who's never worked in the White House. Anonymous was a nobody, a disgruntled employee who was quickly removed from his job a long time ago for — they tell me incompetence. I don't know what for, but they tell me incompetence. You know where he works now? He works at CNN. Can you believe it? <laughs> works at CNN. He wrote a phony book. It was just basically, if you read, if you heard about Anonymous, it was like somebody that was right next to me. I thought it might have been Hope Hicks. It was right. I thought it might have been Jared. I thought it might have been Mike Lee. I was worried from the great state of Utah. I was extremely worried about Rand Paul. Maybe it was Rand. This guy is a low-level, low-life that I don't know. I have no idea who he is, other than I got to see him a little while ago on television. And I think they threw him out a long time ago. His phony book was just based on fake articles and left-wing outlets. He worked with the — listen to this — the fake news New York Times, right? And he's an employee of Google. He works for Google. Isn't that nice? Google. The people that you guys are looking at right now. The whole thing was just one more giant hoax from the Washington swamp and a corrupt special interest group. I'll tell you what. This guy, in my opinion, he should be prosecuted. He should be prosecuted. The left-wing media and the swamp are doing everything in their power to try and stop us. And by the way, 
we're here, and they're not. And their heads are exploding. Their heads are exploding. The media has been peddling their lies for the last four years, and they've had a lot to say. But in the meantime, here we are, and we're going to win the greatest election. And you know what? This election is more important than any election in the history of our country, <laughs> including the last one. And I never thought I'd say that. But you get the last word on November 3rd. You can ensure that when the results pour in, the corrupt media, oh, they're going to have, are you guys ready for this? Look at all of them. Look at all of those corrupt people. Look at all of those corrupt people. The corrupt media, I used to call them the fake news. I thought it was one of the great terms I made, but it's not strong enough. The corrupt media is bowing their heads in shame, not cheering for Sleepy Joe. I can't imagine why they want him. I mean, I can't figure it. That one I can't figure. But it's up to you. This is your country, and you have to save and create a great, beautiful pathway for your country. Get out and vote. You're going to show up in record numbers, vote for America, and against the corrupt media, and against the swamp. And nobody ever told me the swamp was that deep or that vicious. Swamp creatures, they are there. And some of the worst creatures in the swamp are the rhinos. We got some rhinos. But they are a dying breed. They are a dying breed. They're getting a little tired. They're getting a little tired of calling it wrong. It's incredible. Under Biden's cruel and senseless lockdowns, countless Americans will die from suicide, drug overdose, deferred medical care, alcoholism, abuse, so many different things. The cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. We would say that. We talk about that rand, right? Rand notes. That's what happens. What happens to a society, what happens to a country? You take a look at Michigan, where she has everybody locked down. We won a case in the Supreme Court, Michigan. The constitutionality, we won it. They said it was unconstitutional. But in the meantime, she goes on with the appeals. The only one that's free to roam in Michigan is her husband. It's the only one. He's allowed to go boating and do whatever he wants. We got to open up Pennsylvania. We got to open up North Carolina. Got to open up California. Got to open up New York. If I lived in California, New York, Illinois, I'd vote for Trump. And you know what I used to say? And it's come so well, our relationship because of criminal justice reform and prison reform and all the other things with the African-American community. I used to say, what the hell do you have to lose? And they agreed with me, and we're doing incredible. The relationship, what we've done, is incredible. What we've done is incredible. But I say the same thing that the people living in New York, California, Illinois. Automatic wins for the Democrats. I say, vote for Trump. We'll cut your taxes. We'll get you back. We'll bring it back. I say, what the hell do you have to lose? Vote for Trump. Those three big states. You know, it's tough when you have those three big states automatically. It's like automatically put into it. It doesn't matter who runs, no matter who. If we brought back the late, great Abraham Lincoln, New York, California, Illinois. So we got to run the gauntlet. We got to run the coast, right? We, and that's what happened last time. We won Florida. And we won South Carolina, and we won Georgia, we won North Carolina. Remember, that was going to be their firewall. That didn't work out too well for them. And we won Pennsylvania. And we just ran the coast, didn't we? Was that a beautiful? Was that? That was one of the most exciting evenings, Mike Lee, right? Mike Lee, Utah. And we won Utah, right? We won them all. We won them all. We have. They said, there is no way to 270. Remember, 270, you need 270. There is no way for Donald Trump. This was at 5 o'clock before the polls closed. There is no way for Donald Trump to get to 270. Like, we're wasting our time. I said, I don't think so. But they turned out to be right. We couldn't get to 270, but we did get to 306. Right? Not to 306. There is no way. 
Remember that? One Ohio. Ohio is great. One by eight points. They thought we were going to tie. They thought it was going to be close. You know, close. And they called immediately. Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. And then they said, not only won, he's won by eight points. They said, that is that. That was the beginning. They said, what's going on here? We're going to have a bigger surprise in six days. Who's there? If you vote for Biden, it means no kids in school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, and no Fourth of July together. Other than that, you have a wonderful life. Can't see anybody, but that's all right. You have a wonderful life. He wants everyone to, and it's not really, again, it's not him. I'm using this thing, he, it's him, but it's not him. He did, <laughs> he's a puppet. He is a puppet. He's a puppet. He's a beauty, I'll tell you. Look, look, look. I shouldn't say this because it's very disrespectful, but I don't care. Because he's not a nice guy. We have some historians here, true American historians here. He is the worst candidate ever to run in the history of a, pres of a presidential election. He is the worst. That's why there's tremendous pressure on me. I wish he was a good candidate. At least if you lost, you could say, hey, you lost to a good candidate. How the hell do you lose to a guy like this? I don't care. I don't care. We're going to win. We got to win. You're going to lose your country if you don't win. The worst in presidential politics. Now you're going to lose your country. It'll be a disaster. And he's not going to be running things. You have Kamala. Kamala. You know, if you don't pronounce her name exactly right, she gets very angry at you. And then she starts, you know what she does when she gets angry? She starts laughing. Like she did on 60 Minutes, uncontrollable laughs. That means she's angry. Sleepy Joe wants to keep everyone locked down forever, including young people, which will cause enormous harm to Hispanic Americans, African Americans, Asian Americans, women, men, everybody. The Biden plan will crush you and your family. My plan will crush the virus and make our strong. We're going to be stronger, stronger than ever before. Our country will be stronger than ever before. Biden is the candidate of layoffs, lockdowns, and misery. I am the candidate of jobs, vaccines, and prosperity. Our early and aggressive action saved over 2 million American lives. We saw it. We had to make a decision. We closed it up. We understood it. We saved. Remember, we're supposed to be 2.2 million people were going to die. We started doing ventilators. We didn't have ventilators. We became the king of ventilators all over the world. We're now sending ventilators all over the world. We did a great job. We weren't acknowledged. We have governors saying what a great job we did. Everybody was saying what a great job. We did a great job, wasn't acknowledged, and that's okay. But the generals, the admirals, Mike Pence, all of these people that worked on this, they should be acknowledged. We did a job, the likes of which nobody thought. Remember Joe Biden with the H1N1, which he always reverses. H1N1, right? He goes N1H1. I said, no, Joe, it's the other one. The swine flu, right? It's the swine flu. He was a disaster. His chief of staff said they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And now he's always telling me, I should have acted quicker, except when I closed our country to China because it was so heavily affected, and Europe, he was totally against it. He said it's — he said, um, xenophobic. I said, do me a favor, give me a definition, Joe. He couldn't do that because he didn't. He had no idea. He had no idea what it meant. But here are some of the governors talking about what a great job we've all done — we've done — but what a great job we've done in fighting the China virus. Every time I uh, called the president, he's quickly gotten on the line. When we asked to get support for that mercy ship in Southern California, he was able to direct that in real time. What the federal government did, working with states, was a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, we got 2,000 of these field uh, medical sites uh, that are up 
almost all operational now in the state uh, because of his support. And those are the facts. Uh, uh, his team has been on it. I know a team when they're on it, and I know a team when they're not on it. His team is on it. They've been responsive late at night, early in the morning. We are working very well with FEMA Region 2 and with the Army Corps of Engineers building four field hospitals. Uh, that was a decision the president himself took, and I'm grateful for it. These were just extraordinary efforts and acts of mobilization. And uh, the federal government stepped up. Uh, we needed help, and they were there. He said everything uh, that I could have hoped for. Uh, and we had a very long conversation. Uh, and every single thing he said, they followed through on. We've got to have double the number of ventilators that we requested for that area of the state. And in fact, uh, we got them in, frankly, short order. Have we lost anyone because we didn't have a bed or we didn't have a ventilator or we didn't have health care staff? No. The president was extending support for new swabs. So uh, conversation, commitment, uh, promise made, promise kept. Now, to be fair, maybe Biden's not telling us because he's forgotten his own plans. Watch Biden's staff quickly swoop in to shuffle him along during a quickie escape the basement trip to Pennsylvania. Here's the deal. One of the things that, that, that is important is that um, keep in mind, although they're going to vote on uh, uh, Barrett, I think Jack, today. That, line, that was terrifying. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where, if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Fifty-six percent of Americans said that they were better off today than they were four years ago. Would have been under the Obama Biden administration. So why should people who feel that they are better off today? under the Trump administration, vote for you. Well, if they think that, they probably shouldn't. They think 54% of American people are better off economically today than they were in our administration. Well, their memory is not very good, quite frankly. A few moments later. I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. So vote, vote. Visit IWill.com slash Ohio. We got in trouble when we were running against the senator who was a Mormon, uh, the governor, okay? Well, their memory is not very good, quite frankly. It saves a lot of words. In fact, I can go home now. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We only bring those very expensive boards to a very special group of people. It's quite costly, but it does save a lot of talk, doesn't it? Joe Biden has surrendered his party to the rage-filled socialists and Marxists and left-wing extremists. The Democrats know that Biden is just a vessel to implement their socialist takeover, and that's what they're trying to do. We can't let that happen. That's why his running mate is the number one most liberal member of the U.S. Senate, a sponsor of insane, this insane a Green New Deal, $100 trillion. $100 trillion. If we made, if we had the greatest 100 years in history, we couldn't pay $100 trillion. This was made up by AOC plus three, who I don't know if she's ever even studied the environment. Has she ever taken a course on the environment? I doubt it. Biden and his party have spent the entire year inciting violence and hatred against our police, our great police. Last night, the city of Philadelphia was ransacked by violent mobs of Biden supporters for a second night in a row. We could have stopped that. That one we could have stopped in 12 minutes. Stores were looted. Nearly a dozen people were shot, and dozens of officers were injured. Would have been so easy. We're waiting for a call. We'll send in the federal government. Have to get a call. We'll send in the federal government. We'll solve that problem so quickly. 
In Seattle, they took over a big part of the city. We said, finally, we have to go in. We didn't have the permit. We said we're doing it anyway. We let them know we're going in. As soon as we let them go, we're going in tomorrow morning, we told them. As soon as we did that, they held up their hands and they said, we're going home. In Minneapolis, we went in a week and a half later, and I give the governor some credit. He said, let's go. But it should have been a week earlier, a week and a half earlier. And they formed a line, and it ended in 25 minutes. It was all over. Minneapolis. That's why we're going to win the great state of Minnesota. We're going to win Minnesota because of that. For two reasons, we're going to win because of that. And Ilhan Omar, we're going to win because of her, too. How the hell does she get elected? She does not like our country, I can tell you. Biden and Harris stand with the rioters and the vandals. I stand with the heroes of law enforcement. And I think I've been endorsed by almost every major police group in the United States. And during the debate, I asked him, I said, Joe, who endorsed you? Any of the law enforcement groups? He couldn't name one, couldn't name one. Then I said, Joe, say the words law enforcement. Say the words law and order. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. Number one, he couldn't remember the two words in conjunction. But more importantly, he didn't want to lose the radical left, because if he says those words, he loses the radical left. This election day, you must stop the anti-American radicals. I mean, these are radicals from delivering the far left and thundering defeat. You have to deliver them a defeat like they haven't seen before, not just a little one. We don't want to win this close. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician. Last night, we learned that Joe was intimately involved in the Biden family's corrupt business deals with China <laughs> while he shipped American jobs to China by the thousands. If Biden wins, China wins. When we win, you win, Arizona wins, and America wins. <laughs> and you know that, as big as that story was last night, not one mention on social media, not one mention in big tech, not one mention in any of the major outlets, not one mention on any of the networks. Only Fox had it. Fox had it. Tucker did a good job. Sean did a good job. Laura did a good job. Not one mention. So it's not freedom of the press. It's, you know what we have? Suppression of the press. We have, this is not, this is no longer freedom of the press. This is suppression of the press. And we have some very powerful people right here. We cannot let this go on. It's suppression. It's un unthinkable what's going on. And yet they'll write the littlest thing if somebody else does anything or do doesn't have to do it. They make up fake stories. We're thrilled to be joined by somebody that's done a great job and been your great governor, Doug Ducey. Doug. <laughs> done a great job. Thank you, Doug. Great job. A woman who's running for the Senate, currently a senator respected by everybody. Her opponent wants to terminate your Second Amendment. Martha McSally. Martha. Great. Great. Martha, great. Martha, come up just fast. Quick, quick. Fast. Fast. Come on, quick. You got one minute. One minute, Martha's sake. They don't want to hear this, Martha. Come on, let's go. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, let's go. I'm coming. Thank you, President Trump. Arizona, we are ground zero to save the country. We have six days and just a few hours. President Trump and the country are counting on us to send him back to the White House for four more years. Everything is on the line, and my race is about the Senate majority. Everything I wore the uniform for and all you veterans did is on the line. Everything is on the line. 
We've got to bring it home, Arizona. In my race, we'll decide the direction of the country the radical left can take over in the Senate. So if you want someone who's going to be Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer's 51st vote to take away our freedoms and our Second Amendment rights and all the things the president talked about, then you got a guy named Mark Kelly. But if you want a fighter, if you want to continue to have a fighter who is proud to work with President Trump for the great American comeback and strong military and secure our borders and your Second Amendment rights, then I'm your girl, Arizona. I'm your girl. Vote Trump McSally. Let's save the country. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Very important. And you know, you can think of a lot of things, but think about your Second Amendment. His sole function is to terminate your Second Amendment. And all of them, that's what they want to do, and they're in lockstep. A friend of mine, a great senator, somebody that has extraordinary common sense. That's one of the reasons he's a successful man at what he does. Senator Rand Paul. Oh. Come on up, Rand. Look at him. Look at this guy. Come on up. Come on. Thank you. Here's to immunity. To immune people. <laughs> I've got a message for independents and libertarians. My message is this. If you hate war like I hate war, if you want America to be supporting America, not spending our money overseas and wasting lives overseas in unwinnable, endless wars, you need to support the president who said this in his State of the Union. He said, great nations don't fight perpetual wars. Uh, thank you. That's right, man. I have a message for African Americans across our country. Biden and Clinton failed you. The Biden-Clinton crime bill locked up a generation, unfairly locked up a generation of young black men. Joe Biden said, lock them up. They're super predators. Throw away the key. Joe Biden is responsible for decimating our black community. When Mike Lee and I went to talk to the president about the First Step Act, my wife was involved. We talked about how unfair it is. Look at all the families out there. Can anybody say your family's immune from the scourge of drugs? That you haven't had a kid or a cousin or a nephew or somebody that got hooked on drugs? This president, and I tried with President Obama, and we got nowhere, but this president passed the First Step Act that let these people that were serving 30 years in jail for nonviolent crimes, he set their freedom. And I have a message for those of you who are sick and tired of both Republican and Democrat presidents sending your money overseas to countries that hate us. President Trump says, and I say, not one penny more for these countries that hate us. Thank you, man. Thank you, Rand. What a good guy. Great job, Brent. Thank you very much. We have another great senator from the state of Utah. And he is uh, he's a smart one. He's a good one. He's a respected one. Mike Lee, come on up. Come on. Come on, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Mis queridos hermanos hispanohablantes. Necesitamos cuatro años más. Viva Donald Trump! To my Catholic friends, think about a couple of things as you approach the ballot and your friends do. Think about Amy Coney Barrett and think about the little sisters of the poor. 
to my Protestant and evangelical friends. We have to remember that it's by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we've had four years of prosperity and peace. To my Mormon friends, my Latter-day Saint friends, think of him as captain of the run line. He seeks not power to, to, to pull it down. He seeks not the praise of the world or the fake news, but he seeks the well-being and the peace of the American people. Are you ready to stand with me and millions and millions of others who want four more years? Cuatro años más! Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Wow. Good job. Thank you very much, Rand and Mike. What a job. Thank you. That's why they're successful senators and respected by everybody. Thank you. We have another great friend. I think he's going to be replacing Nancy Pelosi soon. I really believe that. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Come up, Kevin. Where's Kevin? Come up. He's going to replace crazy Nancy. He's an incredible guy, my friend. Thank you, sir. All right, we got one mission. We're going to elect the man who kept more promises than he ever made. And we elect him, we're going to have a house that defends him, that stands for America. And when that day comes, I want you all to come to the swearing-in. It'll be before we swear in the president again. But the reason why I want you to come, I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. And I promise you this, I won't bang her with it, but I'll bang the end to the socialism and yes to America. It's all up to you. If you ask me the one state that determines our future, it's Arizona. I will promise you this. I've never seen a man work harder. I've never seen a man fight harder. And he's never asked anything but to make America first. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Kevin McCarthy. Thank you, Kevin. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So two people that have fought hard, love your state. They're tough, they're brilliant, and they are warriors. Andy Biggs and Debbie Lesko. Where are you? Look at you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Debbie. A friend of mine, a lot of people say one of the most powerful men in Europe, Nigel Farage. <laughs> Come on up, Nigel. He's a very non-controversial person, too, right? That's what we're like. He's going. Come on, Nigel. He's very shy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm non-controversial and shy compared to you. I've got to say, four years ago, I was honoured to come to America to bring the Brexit message, the message that you can beat the establishment. And that is what Donald Trump did. 
He beat the pollsters. He beat the media. He beat all the predictions. And here's the worst bit. They've never forgiven him for it. They've never, ever forgiven him. They have spent four years trying to delegitimize him. Four years of the Russia hoax. Four years of a false impeachment. Most human beings under that barrage would have given up. This is the single most resilient and bravest person I have ever met in my life. Thank you very much. And when you vote next week, you are not just voting for who the President of the United States of America is, vital though that question may be. You are voting for the leader of the free world. You are voting, you are voting for the only current leader in the free world who has got the guts to stand up and fight for the nation state, to fight for patriotism, to fight against globalism. You'll be voting for the only leader in the Western world with the real courage to stand up to the Chinese Communist Party. You'll be voting. You'll be voting for decency, plain speaking, and a man who in four years hasn't just cut your taxes, hasn't just improved the economy, but a man who right now is bringing Israel together with Arab nations in a way that nobody ever believed was possible. And that's what he's done. And I wish you Godspeed. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. That's something. Wow, thank you. I'm glad I called him up. I'm glad I could. Thank you very much, Nigel. That's something. He's responsible for a lot of things that have happened over in Europe. Very positive things, too. Thank you very much. A friend of mine who is a brilliant, brilliant gentleman. He loves fights. He just loves fighting. He's somebody that's made a lot of money with fighting. A lot of people say, oh, let's not fight, but he disagrees. He owns and he's the head of the UFC. You know what that is? Dana White, the great Dana White. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. This guy's something, I'll tell you. What a job he's done. State Treasurer Kimberly Yee. Kimberly. Kimberly. Where is Kimberly? Thank you, Kimberly. Good job you're doing. How are the finances? Okay? You're doing well? Good. Maricopa County Supervisor Clint Hickman. Thank you, Clint. Good job, Clint. GOP chair, she's tough, she's smart, and she's with us, and she's always been with us. She works hard. Kelly Ward. He's great. He's great. So thank you all very much. I was very interesting. I didn't think I'd have anyone speak, but it was one after another, and I'm glad they did it, right? That was great. We don't usually do that. Usually it gets a little boring when people speak. This group was a hell of a group. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Together, we built the greatest economy in history, and now we're doing it again. We increased middle class family income over $5,000, more than five times the gains under the last administration. After the virus arrived, we passed $3 trillion in economic relief and saved over 50 million jobs, many in your state, many, many in your state. We've experienced the smallest contraction and the fastest recovery, economically, by far, of any major nation in the world. That's a big thing. And our numbers are going to be coming out very shortly, very soon. GDP and the Fed in Atlanta just made a prediction. They said 35 percent. Now, I'll take 25 right now. 35 would be many times larger than the largest number we've ever had. GDP, the all-important GDP. 35 is what they predict. 
And let's see what happens. And it'll be three days before the election. So I'll make you a deal. If the number's a bad number, you don't have to vote for me, okay? But I think it's going to be incredible. If you look at housing starts, if you look at automobile and all the productivity that we've had, if you look at hiring, 11.4 million people over a short period of time. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. And we built over 400 miles of new wall, including 200 miles right here in the state of Arizona. 200 miles. It goes down very deep, and it goes up very high. You know, there are two reasons it goes down deep. One is to hold it up, and the other is for tunnels. You never had it so good, and your numbers are fantastic. Joe Biden has pledged to open borders. He even said, maybe we'll rip down the wall. I don't think that's going to happen. He wants open borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. His plan would completely eliminate our borders by implementing nationwide catch and release. You catch them a killer, a rapist, whoever it is. And you release them into our country. And then in the debate, he said, oh, but they come back for trial. No, they don't, Joe. They don't come back. You don't see them again. This would trigger a tsunami of illegal immigration from every corner all over the world. He's also pledged to — and you know what he wants to do — give free health care and mass amnesty for all illegal border crosses bankrupting your Medicare and your Social Security systems. I don't think so. And, you know, we all have a heart. We want to take care of people. But everybody all over the world would pour into our country. We wouldn't be able to do it. Under Biden's plan, you'll have no borders, no health care, no middle class. You'll have no country, frankly. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including nearly $1 billion to build the world's most advanced guided missiles. Guess where we're building them? Right here in Arizona. Right? We also passed VA choice and VA accountability. Things said that you'll never get them done, sir. You'll never get it done. We got them both done. Accountability, where we can fire bad people that work at the VA, that don't love our vets. We take care of our vets, and now they don't have to wait for two weeks, three weeks, five weeks, seven weeks. Now they go, and if they can't get good service, we have great doctors in the VA, but if you can't get the service, you go to a local doctor, a local hospital. We take care of the bill. We have a 91 percent approval rating now, the highest ever by far with our vets. We took 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate, and we killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We took out the world's top terrorist. Soleimani is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal, $150 billion for nothing, for nothing. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem and even got it built. And even got it built, right? I even got it built. Got it built for Supposed to cost $2 billion. We did it for 500000 A slight cost underrun. That was called a cost underrun. You don't see that in government too much. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. They've been working on that for 52 years. I got it done in about two hours. Every president promised these things, but they never got them done. There's a lot of pressure on people when you have that. Jerusalem, Golan Heights, a lot of pressure, but we got them done. And instead of never-ending wars, we are forging peace in the Middle East. We are forging peace. And I've said this, and I've said it a lot, but I mean it with every breath. I've done more in 47 months than sleepy Joe Biden has done in 47 years in Australia. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and the American dream. You know, Abraham Lincoln was a great Republican. Just remember that. I can be more presidential than any president other than possibly Abraham Lincoln when he's wearing the hat. That's a tough one. Now he was a great Republican. Over the next four years, in conclusion, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. And we will end our reliance on China 
once and for all that's already started. We will make our medical supplies right here in the United States, right here in Arizona. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will defend religious liberty, free speech, the right to life, and the right to keep and bear arms. Second Amendment. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. That's what we have. And the $2.5 trillion, all made in the USA, we have the finest missiles and rockets and tanks and submarines and jets, the F-35, stealth. You can't see it. Sir, you can't see it. That makes it good. I said, I think that makes it good. What do I know? But I know if you're the opponent and you can't see the jet, you know what? You got a little advantage there. Now we have the best in the world, and our nuclear arsenal has been refurbished and restocked, and hope to God we never have to use it. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency already completed, goes into effect. Bigger than healthcare, you watch on January 1st. Lower drug prices even more. First year, in 52 years, the drug prices prescription went down. But I instituted what's called the Favored Nations Clause. We pay the most in the world. We're now going to be tied for the lowest price in the world. We will protect your Social Security and your Medicare. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon. And the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. And NASA, NASA is now, again, the preeminent space station. There's nothing like what we have. What a job they've all done, including our great Vice President, Mike Pence. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the people of Arizona. From Tombstone to Tucson, right? Tucson. Does anybody come from Tucson? My friend comes from Tucson. From Mesa to Yuma, from Prescott to right here in Goodyear, Goodyear. We inherit the legacy of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their heart, sweat, and soul to secure our liberty and defend our freedom. This great state was settled by some of the toughest men and strongest women ever to walk the face of this great, wonderful, beautiful planet. Arizona is where Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday became American legends. It's where the great American West became the American dream. And Arizona is the state where generations of pioneers and prospectors, miners and ranchers, cowboys and cattle hands, marshals and lawmen, tamed the frontier, braved the blazing sun, like I'm doing right now, and showed the entire world how the West was won. They helped make America into the greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. <laughs> Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning.
winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Arizona, go out and vote. Go out and vote. We have made America powerful again. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. Proud. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arizona. Go out and vote. Thank you.